in terms of how the course works, what is it? Uh, we kind of talked a little bit about it. Uh, the Compassion course is a one-year course that's designed to, first of all, work around your schedule, uh, you know, without uh, regard to your financial constraints or challenges. Uh, it's, it's available, it's, ex it's, it's accessible to anybody and everybody in the world. So that's the first thing. In terms of what it's what is it about and what do we do in the course? Well, we really try and practice how to have more compassion in our lives. How can I have a more compassionate view of myself and of other people? This is really, I think, the challenge sometimes for us humans on this planet. How can I start seeing people as humans instead of seeing them as evildoers? It's a choice. We're not telling you that you have to abide by this. It's a way for us to have a more compassionate life. For myself, I can say that the reason that I do the work in the course is because I want to have a more compassionate life because I don't really want to walk around with a heavy heart. Uh, right? It's like, I don't want to walk around with the resentment towards other people. I want to be able to go ahead and understand what that's about. Right? This isn't about just turning something off. It's really about having a more deeper understanding of what something is about. So what, what is it about? It, for me, and this is the big part of what the course has to do with, is that start doing, as I like to call, a bit of investigative work to understand what needs are going on for us behind our thoughts, our words, our actions. So this concept of needs, as far as what we're saying in the course, is how us humans can get along and have more understanding of one another, right? It's through that process, it's through that inquisitive process that we can start having more understanding about human behavior, about why somebody else would be doing what they're doing. Why would somebody say what they're doing? This might sometimes be a stranger, this might sometimes be a family member, it might sometimes be someone in my life. So for me, Again, I kind of come back to the purpose as to why am I doing the course? It's because I want to have a more compassionate life, right? And so a lot of what we do in the course really helps us and supports us in being able to have more compassionate understanding to ourselves, to other people. Because once we can start understanding, this is, if you will, the theory behind the course. Once we start understanding and being able to relate to one another on the needs level, we start understanding why I would be doing what it is that I'm doing. And that gives me a little bit more access to moving closer to people who might be doing things that I don't like, that I don't agree with. I can at least now move closer instead of having the hatred towards them, right? Because that's, for me, that's going to really end up being much more, if you will, uh, I end up paying the price in the long run for that. So what we do in the course, we start really working through the thoughts, through the ideas of somebody else's wrongness, of our wrongness, right? Or even our righteousness or uh, somebody else's righteousness. It's a way for us to, again, have access at some level to being able to connect to one another. And one of the things that we talk about in the course, the concept of needs in terms of what do we mean by needs? Uh, they are energies, it's why we do the things that we do. It's a way for us to really think about this thing that we're all having, right? Called the human experience. And so the course helps us to be able to have a more practical way. Most of my life, before I came to the course, I would read, I would hear, um, hey, you know, practice compassion, be compassionate, have empathy. But I wasn't really taught how to do that. I wasn't given the how to. And so as far as I'm concerned, that's what the course gives me. It gives me a little bit of a how to on a weekly basis with support from facilitators, from colleagues, uh, and from compassion course members around the world, right? We have the ability to start practicing the ability to have more compassion in our lives and practicing that towards others as well. So that's that's the idea of what the course is about in terms of how it works. How do we do this thing? Because I'm saying that there's a lot of how to. On a weekly basis, 
if you're in the course, if you're going to register, if you're thinking of registering, uh, week one of the course is already available. And how is that available? So we send it out via email at 12 o'clock noon every Wednesday. So the first one is already out there. So in terms of, you know, how does the course work? We send you an email every week. In that email, that's where you will find the how-to, if you will. What the course contains is uh, it has a concept for the week. So every week there's a brand new concept. What I mean by concept is that it's a way to learn about practicing compassion. Maybe the concept has to do with talking more about beliefs, about anger, about feelings, about judgments that we have towards others, right? So there's going to be different concepts. In fact, if you go to the website, compassioncourse.org, you can find the syllabus on there as well. Um, you can read all the different concepts that we talk about. So each weekly email contains uh, a concept every week. Uh, it also has a story from Tom's life of how he was able to you know, incorporate and practice that concept in his life. And so that's so far what we got in the email, a concept every week, right? A new email with a concept and a story that illustrates that concept. And every week there are practices, things that you can try out in your life to that, you know, it relates back to the concept that we're talking about that week. So everything's going to be kind of like we make it very easy for you to access the course. Sometimes people just want to read the email and practice those exercises and, you know, go about their life, trying it out. Um, so that is how you access the course via email. This is how we started it 12 years ago. It's going to continue this way. So this is how we deliver the course over email. And so sometimes people just want to you know, make contact with the course by just following the emails. And so you will keep those. You can keep those in your inbox. You're going to, you know, always receive them on every Wednesday. Uh, the first one's already out. If you register after register after the email went out, you still receive it in your confirmation email and things like that. So the course works via email. If you want to um, involve yourself more with the course, jump in deeper, integrate more, connect more with people from the course, then there are other things that we can do as well. So again, sometimes people just like, you know, following along with the emails and they're cool with that. If you want to maybe get some more integration, then we do have some more options for you. One of those options being that you can um, connect with other people in the course from around the world. Maybe this is so that you can help each other out. Uh, maybe you can ask questions, help other people with their questions, and you can even share stories. So we have this community site. It's called the Global Compassion Network, the GCN. We invested a lot of time and effort and energy into setting this up. It's a really, really beautiful site uh, that makes everything, like all the additional things in the course, really, really way accessible. So again, Sometimes people just like to follow along with the email. Let me move this here. Sometimes people like to maybe take it to the next level and join the community site. So that's going to be the Global Compassion Network. So this is going to be and another, uh, a really additional resource. Um, so that if you want to, uh, there's a few things available on the Global Compassion Network on the GCN. Uh, some of those being uh, having access to previous Compassion Course emails. You know, let's say you lose one or you can't find it for some reason. Well, they're all going to be accessible on the GCN. So if you ever need to go back and look for one, and you don't want to sort through your emails or you can't find it, you go to the GCN. Um, the live conferences, we're going to talk about that also. Um, but the live conferences that happened with Tom, the first one being on 
July 8th of this year. That's where you can um, join in. That happens. It's a once a month conference with Tom. It's an hour and a half at 12 p.m. Eastern time. And that's where Tom uh, reviews the previous weeks that went out, right? So that at that point, there's going to be between three to four weeks that are going to be reviewed on July 8th. Uh, three weeks, to be correct, to be exact. So Tom's going to review the last three weeks that went out because maybe you have some questions about it. So he's going to review it and try and really um, help with understanding a little bit more what he was trying to get, you know, what the message that, that was that he was trying to get across. So you can find recordings of those conferences on the Global Compassion Network. Another thing that's really cool on the Global Compassion Network is that you have access to work with a Compassion Course mentor. Uh, a mentor is someone who you work with on a one-on-one -on -one level. And, you know, like, let's say you really need some help keeping up with the course and understanding it and practicing it. Well, you can find that type of support in the Global Compassion Network um, by looking for a mentor. There's a whole directory. You can read through everybody's bio, uh, who they are, what they've done on the Global Compassion Network, and you can find a mentor on there. Uh, obviously, sometimes this is gonna come with a rate, with a fee, but you'll find that out once you start going through the bio of every mentor. And then uh, there's another really cool thing that you can find on the Global Compassion Network, and that is practice groups. Um, I think the name says it all, right? Practice groups are a great way for you to work with other people in the course, so that if you wanna look for people, um, who are meeting up on a weekly basis, on a monthly basis. There are various different types of practice groups. Uh, some of the hosts for practice groups are actually hosting free intros. So you can just get to know them. So again, you're gonna find that on the Global Compassion Network. This is something that you're gonna be able to access um, when you receive the weekly emails, right? The weekly emails, you're gonna find instructions on how to get into the GCN. Um, so, and in the GCN, so you got, you know, access to the conference recordings, to previous weeks in case you lose them. And then you can also find, like I said, mentors, somebody who you want to work with on a one-on-one -on -one basis. And you can also find practice groups, which are groups of people who are doing this together that are being led by a practice group leader. Uh, and those leaders, of course, are being trained uh, together. They work together. They support one another. There's a, there's a leadership council that we'll talk about, and those members are here as well, and we'll introduce them. So right so far, uh, this is another way to interact with the course. You know, you want to take your interaction to the next level. You jump into the GCN. That's an option for you. Uh, the GCN also has a lot of other really cool things. You can find audio content on there. Like if you want to read more about stuff, we have that on there. If you want to hear more about stuff, it's on there. If you want to see videos, it's on there. We have blogs on there as well. Um, so it's a place that the community comes together in basically. And you can find a lot of really helpful resources in there. So we got the email portion covered. We got the GCN covered. And so one other thing, and this is you know something that the course also comes with, like with your standard registration here, is the monthly conferences with Tom. Um, So I talked about this briefly earlier. Uh, let's talk about it a little bit more now. I'll move this up a little bit. <clears throat> so uh, this is gonna be another way for you to interact with the course. Uh, like I said, the first conference, you know, today's just a kickoff to celebrate the start of the course. Um, see if you, you know, you have some questions about it. So the monthly conferences, this is something that's hosted by Tom Bond. It's an hour and a half. The first one's on July 8th. And that's the second Monday of July. So every second Monday of every month at 12 p.m., you will have the monthly conference with Tom. And that's where you can hear him review the previous weeks and you can ask questions as well. So it's a really great way for you to just kind of like deepen your learning. Uh, like I said, these are recorded. You're not required to be there. So if you want to write, um, if, you, if you have questions and you're not able to make it, you can email them in. And then you can also review the recording afterwards because we are going to post that in the GCN. So once the recording is finished, 
we're going to post that in the GCN and you can view it uh, for however long you want to view it. I mean, one of the things that I like to point out to people is that we do leave, we do leave the resources up indefinitely. You know, the course ends. We just ended a course uh, last week, the 2023 course we finished. And the resources for that are still up. You know, unless we really run out of space, we, we don't find reason to have to remove things. So one of the things, uh, people have been coming back to the course over and over again. Just to let you know, we do not send the same emails out every year. It's the same content, but we review every weekly email so that we don't just send you, we're not just pressing copy, you know, schedule, copy, schedule. We keep the emails fresh so that they're concise, so that they're effective, so that we're not trying to, you know, we're not just, you know, pasting things and sending them out over and over again. We put a lot of effort and time and we have editors, we have people who review the emails so that we keep them fresh for everybody. So, um, right, we've covered coursework over email. You have a lot more content to find on the GCN and there are monthly conferences that you can attend. Um, and then, uh, one last thing in terms of like, there are things that you can also add on to your Compassion Course registration. So one of the things that you can add on as a Compassion Course participant, like let's say you, you know, you're here for the first or second time or something. Uh, if you wanna receive a certificate of completion, uh, like if you wanna, you know, show that you've actually done the Compassion Course and you wanna receive, a, you know, an actual piece of paper, a digital one, um, you can do so by signing up for the certificate of completion. So the certificate of completion, sometimes people like this option. And again, it's an option, um, but if you wanna receive a certificate of completion, uh, you do need to sign up for it. So that does come with an additional cost. And what we do, especially during this time, I'm still reviewing a bunch of journal entries. Um, so if you, if you uh, have your work finished, Please rest assured, we're going to get to everybody's work within this week or next week. You're going to receive your certificate of completion. But the certificate of completion is an option in case sometimes people like it because it keeps them on track. I mean, you have to say on track if you're going to receive a certificate of completion. So that's an option. If you want to receive a certificate, you can do so by signing up for that. If you are already registered and you want to receive a certificate of completion, we have a special link for that and we'll put that into the chat so that if you want it added on to your uh, registration after the fact, you can do that. Um, I'll let you know now that we leave that option open until about week three or four. You know what I mean? Like that's when you really want to like make sure that you're staying on track with it. In terms of what we ask for, for the certificate of completion, we just ask to show that you've done the exercises. You know, so like if one of the exercises says, you know, what are some of the judgments that you've been working through this week? And what are some of the needs behind those judgments? Well, you're gonna write out, you know, I have this judgment that this person is a jerk and my needs are, you know, for care and understanding. So that way we can actually verify that you've done the work. Um, Right. And that, you know, if you want to show that you received a certificate, we can validate this person did do this work, obviously. Right. So um, so that's that's an option. That's one of the options that you have to add on to your registration. Um, if you have taken the course before, you know, you can look at our website. We have options for uh, alumni who want to become mentors and who want to become practice group organizer facilitators. Those are under the leadership opportunities on the homepage. You scroll down on Compassion Course homepage and you'll see the options for leadership opportunities. So uh, one of the cool things, just to let you know, if you do receive a certificate of completion, then yeah, you can sign up in the future to become a mentor if that's something that you're really interested in and working with people on a one-on-one -on -one basis there. So um, this is a lot of the how the course works. Talked a little bit about what it is. Here's the how it works. Um, and so I think that this kind of covers, you know, concisely. There's a lot more to talk about. You know, we can talk at length as to what's offered here, um, right? But just to kind of give you an idea of what is offered here. So um, I'll tell you what, we have, we're going to talk about um, future empathy leadership opportunities. You know, like if you're in the course and you're like, hey, I would love to teach other people empathy and I want to host empathy practices. 
we'll we'll talk about that, and we'll also talk about um, people who are in the leadership council who are helping run the practice group program and the mentoring program. Um, so we'll talk about that, but maybe I'll take a little bit of a pause right now and check in to see if you have questions, doubts, comments, anything that we can help you with right now, anything you know that relates to anything that we've talked about. So any any questions about the course, about the content, how it's delivered? Okay, we'll start with Rachel and then Lynn. Hi, so I just took a look at the um, weekly email. Um, just so I understand, are we looking for like to respond to that person or are we just trying to understand what needs are trying to be met by that person? Oh, are you talking about like the practices section? Uh-huh. Let me see. I mean, look at it. Uh, and then I had another question, but go ahead. Yeah, I mean, so you're trying to figure out, and this is what um, the purpose of this exercise is, right? Um, trying to understand what the needs are for that person who's, right? So like, the you know, part of the exercise is to connect to what somebody's doing, but to try and also now be curious about what needs they're trying to meet with what they're doing, basically. Are you asking them if you're getting it oh, right? Yeah. So, I mean, right now, um, I wouldn't ask them. Um, you're just I'll, guessing. Yes. And I do okay. a lot of what the course, you know, uh, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I love that question because a lot of what the course is about, um, I remember somebody said this, the work in the course is about an 80% inside job. You know what I mean? Because it's like, and I want to be a hundred percent on my 80% <laughs> because that's why, by the way, Rachel, and, and this goes for everybody. When I can do this in here and be very, very complete, be very connected to what's going on for the other person. From my experience, it makes the interaction. If that ever happens, like if we ever talk me and that other person, for me, it makes that conversation flow a lot easier because I really am much more curious and aware of what could be going on for them, right? So, so are there, yeah. my other question actually connected to this is, do we get to practice that in real time? Like, is that what Tom Bond's monthly group is about or is that something? Yeah, I mean, it? it's an option. And what I mean by that is, so like, I like to... Specifically, I think what I kind of like to reserve a lot of what the course is about sometimes is for people who are really near and dear in my life. Um, meaning like there are people in my life who I really want to work on our connection. And so sometimes we just might not be able to really get through the conversation. In which case, and what I mean by that is we might both be really upset about something and that's not gonna help us to get to the conversation. So a lot of what's happening in the course is things that I can practice on my own. I can practice it with other people from the course. Maybe I go to a practice group or I find a practice partner or something to practice the exercises with. Is that and an empty buddy or is that- Well, one different? of the options in the Global Compassion Network is a practice partner. So somebody you can practice with, practice the exercises with. Um, so that that way, you know, I like to say the work that I do outside of the relationship is really awesome because it helps me to bring back connection into the relationship, right? It's sort <laughs> of like, if I can practice some of these exercises without the person who I'm really upset with, that's going to be very awesome because I'm not having to be, I'm not holding that person responsible for me being able to actually have success with the course. I can have success with the course. It just might not be that I'm gonna be able to practice it with that person. Can I add something there, Antonio? So Rachel, um, 
the monthly conferences when Tom comes, he does a review of the weekly lessons and then he answers people's questions. It is not really a place where you would come to do some practice. It's the empathy uh, practice, the empathy, uh, the empathy program is the place that you would have more of a place, an opportunity for practicing or so the, with your empathy okay. buddy. So, the, sorry, the empathy caf cafes, is that what you're referring to? We're actually, we're changing the program a little bit this year. Is this a good time for me to throw that out there, Antonio? Yeah, if you want, yeah, do a brief. So in the past, we had empathy cafes and empathy circles. There was a lot of similarity with uh, the cafes having a little bit more of an educational component. This year, we're looking to do some, what we are likely to call empathy labs. And there will be one in the evening and one in the morning, uh, New York time, so that it's available to more people. And you can come with your empathy questions. We'll go over some tips. We'll maybe do some practices. It will be a little bit more, um, there'll be a little bit more variety there. And that will be an opportunity for you to come and get some practice. And then we're also going to start with an introduction to an empathy buddy ship. So we'll do our plan is a four week course where you can come and we'll talk with you about more about the strategy of empathy. And I know someone had asked the difference between empathy and compassion. And for our purposes, we're talking about needs based empathy, which is really a strategy that we use to help us understand and interpret things related to the course. So um, We'll have a four week introductory class where you will understand what empathy is all about and you'll have the, the opportunity to practice a bit and maybe meet some other people who are looking for a buddy that you can then meet with on an ongoing basis to practice empathy. And then we're, we're planning to do an advanced empathy buddy program uh, because so much of this work is really internal. And the more work we do internally, the easier it is for us to approach other people in a more calm manner and in a way that is more likely for us to maintain connection and to come up with solutions that we might not have come up with before. Makes sense. Do you want to add anything? Does that answer your question a bit, Rachel? Yes, it does. Thank you okay. so much. Kathy, yeah. would you like to add something? I know we didn't introduce you before, but what would you like to add? Okay, I'm asking okay. you to unmute. Are you able to? Okay. There we go. Yes, I do want to answer the question because from my own personal experience of being in the course, the best place to do these practices is in a practice group because um, many of the practice groups that are offered actually walk through the practice. Um, so like in my practice group, we do the practices together and you get support in well, what does he mean do this or what does he mean do that if you have any confusion about what the practice is or what the steps of the practice are then you can have that kind of support in a practice group setting to do the practices together so that might be an opportunity for you to get some support in actually doing them yes thank, thank you so you. much so it was an empathy lab and what was the other one there's an empathy buddy uh program introduction thank you. Um, and yeah, thank you, Kathy. And we also have mentors, which is, could be a one-to-one -one situation where someone takes you through the weekly lessons and a practice partner is someone that you would meet with on an ongoing basis to uh, review the lessons. Uh, sometimes it's just for accountability so that you are able to take the time and sit there and actually do the lessons when you want to. Um, yeah. Okay. I hope that answers things for you. Yeah. Thank you. Awesome. All right. Lynn. Hi, me again. So um, coming back to the more of the technical stuff. So I was trying to find out yesterday where I could see that I actually was signed up for the course because after I did the the GNC, I was like, oh, so it ke I keep getting the emails of uh, register for the course. It's like, does it not know that I'm registered or did I miss and didn't really register? If you received today's email for week one, did you get yeah. that one? I haven't looked because I uh, it's nine o'clock here in Olympia. Oh, okay. so I didn't look at the computer to see if I got it. I, I don't think I did, but I'm not sure. Yeah, send us an email and I'll double check that. So if you okay. email us course coordinator, okay. nycnbc.org, we'll double check. Okay. And 
And I guess that's it. I'll see you on the 8th. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Thank you. yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah. yeah and, and just as a heads up for everybody, I think uh, the system sometimes just has a hard time distinguishing people who have, you know, take who are in the course. Um, and it just it's hard for it to actually like um, not send them an email. So, you know, we're trying we actually do not send emails intentionally to people who are registered in this course here. Sometimes the system just cannot segregate like and not send it to the people who are in this year's course like in, in the sense that like maybe you've been in our email list before and if you are in our email list from the past it might still send you an email so but we intentionally do not send it to this year's course list but again it's hard to for the system to be like oh i'm not going to send it to these people but if you are in our system from the past you might still get one of those emails that says hey join the course and all that stuff so um, that's an ongoing thing that we keep on working on so that people don't get those emails so yeah. Antonio, I would like to throw out there also that I'm having a difficult time attending to what's going on here and what's happening in the chat. So if you have a particular question, feel free to reach out to course coordinator at nycnvc.org with any specific questions, or you could reach out to me, Doreen at nycnvc.net or yeah, yeah, with any particular questions. Cause yeah, it, there's a lot coming on, especially if it's something specifically for you. Yeah. And by the way, one of the cool things that we're going to do during the live conferences with Tom, uh, you know, for now, we're keeping the chat open because there might be people who are not in the course right now. But if you are in the course during the live conferences, the chat will be moved to the GCN. Right. So the Global Compassion Network is where there's an actual live chat bot. And like, you know, similar to any chat room that you've ever done before, it's a chat room. So you can have a live chat room. Um, but it's off of Zoom so that if you want to keep your focus here, you can do so without the chat maybe being distracting. So yeah, we have that coming up for you when, once the conferences begin. So, all right, Lauren. Nope, still don't hear you. Are you there, Lauren? Try and unmute. All right, maybe I'll come back to you, Lauren. Let's try Katie. Um, I just had a question about, um, do I need the certificate of completion so that I can become a facilitator? Oh yeah, you don't need it for that. If you want to run a practice group, um, if you've been in the course before, that's the minimum requirement. Um, you know, because we essentially want you to know what you are getting yourself into in terms of like, you know, what the course material is. So what we really ask for, pe for people to run a practice group and be an organized facilitator is that you've done the course with us at one point or another. And if that's the case, uh, then you're eligible to become an organized facilitator for practice groups. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. I would like to add to that, Antonio, because there was a question in the chat about mentoring. We do ask that anyone who wants to mentor do the certificate of completion, because that's the only way that we are really able to uh, say that we have seen that you have done the work of the course. It isn't a certificate program in the traditional sense. It's a certificate of completion. So you, we see your work, and then we can say that you have made the attempt and and put effort into understanding the concepts and therefore we are more comfortable allowing you to go and support others as a mentor yeah and sometimes you know the difference between a mentor and a practice group and why we ask for a certificate of completion is you're going to be dealing on a more one-on-one -on -one level and myself as a mentor um i know that that sometimes requires an acumen of focus of like just knowing your stuff because sometimes the situations that you're working with people on a one-to-one -one level are different than when you're just doing a group and you're going through the exercises together and you have the support of other people when you're in a group you're on when you're on one-on-one -on -one, you're one-on-one -on -one. <laughs> so you know get ready if you will so all right Gideon unmute okay you hear me yes Okay, hi. I, I basically joined this uh, group for the empathy part of it, and I'm trying to fine-tune uh, the, the methods that uh, it's being held. Is it 
communication through emails or is there a live video chat? I would love to see a weekly video chat to talk about it. Uh, that's basically it. Uh, yeah. I know something was said about it. I may have missed it. Yes. I also know that uh, the fee was paid and uh, I'm registered to something. Again, not exactly sure. So uh, that's yeah. it. Yeah. So uh, if you're registered, check your email and I'll, I'll show us what we're looking for here specifically. Because uh, what you're talking about, Gideon, is the uh, empathy part. The empathy part, that's going to be that's where you focus. Practice. Exactly. And that's where, that's where a practice group comes into the picture. And that's where the empathy sessions that we're going to host, like Doreen's going to host empathy labs later on in the year. So to find all of that sort of information, um, you're going to make sure that you open your email for week one. And I'm going to show you exactly what you're looking for. You're going to be looking for this on an ongoing basis. Um, make sure that you're able to access the Global Compassion Network, right? If you're if you're accessing the GCN, the Global Compassion Network, right? This is going to be, right? If you use this link, you'll have access to it. And this is what it looks like. This is where, just to give you all a quick preview, um, this is where you're going to find um, other people to practice with. So if you're looking for a weekly session video session or something you're looking sort. for week, weekly video sessions and if there is something to... that somebody would simply say and describe empathy describe with examples yeah. and so that's show me what to do <laughs> exactly right okay. make it easy for me so that's yeah look for, so you're going to go to find the practice group on the left side here and this is where you're going to find a, some options that might fit your schedule i see this is so Make sure you open week one, use that link, and you're going to look for practice groups because that's going to be, like I said before, and I think Kath Ann just said it also, this is a really, really awesome way to meet on a weekly basis with live video with other people so that you can practice a lot of empathy, All right. So open up your email. Like I said, make sure you look for the GCN links. There's, I think, three in week one, right? This is a, So you're going to find that when you go to the Global Compassion Network, you're going to find practice groups, and that's what's going to help you to look for practice. other ways to meet, to work with people. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Vivian. All right. Scott. Oh, hi. Um, I took a discovery weekend and I've been in a practice group for six months or so. Um, I do organizational mediation and I was interested in NVC because in the end, people have to talk to each other. And um, but so and I, I, I can see I get a sense of what this course is and it, and the many values of it. I'm, I'm, and maybe if this can be answered offline by some staff person, but I'm not seeing this leading me to a methodology in a mediation. Yeah, and is yeah. there some more specific training for people that are using this in organizational settings specifically? It's one thing to have a course and teach, that here's how you do it, but how do you actually engage that in the middle of real life yeah. organizational yeah, stuff? Yeah, exactly. I think this is going to, there's two parts to that answer. Um, well, I guess I'll do the first part, which is that we, I mean, I I, know, I, I, I think, were you in the Discovery Weekend right before the pandemic? I was trying to remember. Yeah, it was in a recent, more recent one. More recent one. I, yeah, okay. Um, so we're going to be offering a number of, um, like, specifically what you're asking for. I think later this year, or early next year, we're going to be offering training on how you can bring this into the professional sphere. And that's going to be a similar thing to like an in-person discovery weekend where we're going to like, Tom will be the person who's going to be teaching that workshop and things like that. So that's going to be kind of like the first rollout, if you will, of how we bring this to a more organizational, you know, role, um, teaching people how to incorporate a lot of this stuff in the professional world. So that's one thing. The other thing 
I find that this in conjunction with business trainings is only going to support being able to have conflict resolution skills because this might help us to be able to understand how we can employ empathy at certain instances, especially during professional mediation uh, scenarios. So I think like it can only help, I think is part of my answer um, in terms of like giving you a really great strong background of how we can really continue working on our skills. And on top of that, um, you know, we really agree. We've seen that trying to bring this into those spheres that you're talking about, Scott, um, that's something that we really want to go ahead and, and work on a little bit more by actually having specific courses on that. Um, so that's coming. And if you're in our newsletter, if you're on our email list, then you're going to hear about that. Thank you. I'll look for that. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, Scott. Cool. All right. I'll try Lauren one more time. No, no, Lauren. Okay. Antonio, I have a couple of questions that were in the chat. Okay. Okay. One, I can just answer the exercises that Antonio was talking about are in the, will be at the end of each weekly email. I know someone had asked about that. Um, and as far as the empathy labs and the empathy uh, buddy training, that will start after the empathy training on August 26th for new people, because you will have been in the course long enough and gotten the information. For people who have been around before, we do have a, a training on June, uh, yeah, July 15th and August 19th as well. You will receive an email about that. So uh, we had two questions about the privacy of the information uh, for COC people and the disclaimer on the GCN. Okay. Well, yeah. So, so someone was asking, how do we manage the privacy on the, for the COCs? Oh, I think it says it in there. Um, well, basically uh, the only people who see the information in the COC are myself, Doreen or Tom. And we are committed to keeping that private. Yeah. Was there another question that you had? Yes. Yeah, someone had asked about the, the lengthy disclaimer on the GCN, and she was questioning what uh, information was gathered. So the GCN is operated by, it's on a platform called circle.os. Uh, sorry, sorry, circle.so, circle.so. Um, in terms of like, you know, what their privacy policies are, uh, that's going to be something that I think from, you know, what our experience has been, it may not work for you. It may work for you. And so we don't create that part of things because it's on a platform. You know, the GCN is on a platform called circle.so. So uh, we don't make that stuff up, unfortunately. So um, I would probably just check in to see if that works for you or not. All right. Go to decibel and then we'll start talking about a few more things in the last 10 minutes here hi uh, about the certificate of uh, completion i understand that uh, people who enroll for that uh, um, get some more effort from your parts uh, to check their ac accountability yeah uh, do you do the, the same thing or something similar to people who do not enroll for the, this uh, certificate? Uh, so the differences are that if you are in the certificate of completion, you receive weekly email reminders about it. Um, but you could say that that's the same thing as receiving the weekly emails, meaning that we are going to always send you a weekly email for the course. Um, but on top of that, if you're in the certificate of completion, you get another email reminder, usually the same day. So mm -hmm. I would say, you know, in terms of like, is there, th th in a way there's almost like similar effort in terms of what we do, because we're always going to email you. Um, but it's funny, right? Cause even with the certificate of completion, even though you might get an email, it doesn't mean that you open it. So, um, so it's really a matter of also like as much as we, you know, really try and help everybody as much. I think it's a matter of also people, you know, bringing themselves to doing the work. I know of people 
who are in the certificate of completion, who it's taken them two years, maybe more to actually complete it because it's hard to just keep track of something on a weekly basis like that. Same thing goes for the weekly compassion course emails themselves. So, mm. um, yeah. So actually they send you what they have done uh, in the previous week and you review the, their activity yeah. and say, uh, okay, Jim, you're okay for this week. Uh, keep oh, yeah. up with well, the good work or something like that. So that we don't do because um, that would be a lot of effort. Uh, it's just a weekly reminder to go into the journal and do your work. So, you know, if December comes around and you are not really up to par with your work, we wouldn't let you know, hey, you should keep up with your work or anything like that. Um, that would be more of something that you could do with a mentor. Okay, with a mentor. Because if you want to stay on track with the course, I have, you know, from what I've experienced working with mentors, they are great for supporting you and staying on track with things. Um, mm -hmm. You know, they would probably help you to be like, hey, like, you know, maybe you want to go back and do a little bit of work on this week and things like that. Um, Antonio, yeah. you may want to offer some information about Inkify and how that keeps track. Yeah, I mean, the platform where people keep track of their certificate of completion work is on a platform called Inkify. And it shows you, you know, hey, you've done, you know, you're up to 100% of the work completed because it's week two and you've done, you know, these two weeks of work. But let's say you only did week one and not week two. So then that's 50%. So as the course goes along, the platform shows you the percentage of completion um, it's a really cool little status bar, you know, every week it'll let you know a new week is available and you can complete it. And if you do so, and you're keeping up with everything, then that means, you know, if you do this week, next week, week three, you're up to hundred percent. But if you do this week, next week, and not week three, then that's like 70 something percent. So you're missing a third of the work there. So, but I think again, if you want to receive like consistent, you know, encouragement that might be more for a mentor. All right. Okay. Kim. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Hi. I was just gonna um say that how how I um experienced doing the certificate of the completion last year. Yeah. Nah. That was my second year going through the course. The first year I really didn't keep up, and that's okay. I decided that's okay. <laughs> but the second year I decided that I would, you know, register for that and, and, and enroll and pay because it mattered to me that I wanted to challenge myself and that sort of have that sort of carrot of motivation to yeah. keep myself like, remember, don't give up. If you get, I was having major surgery coming up and remember, I want to have this so that I can say, and just that I did this and yeah. that, I, you know, um, maybe I'll have more possibilities for how I'm going to incorporate this into my life in the future. And so I chose to do that. And, and I was glad that I did, because when it got really hard, I had some things come up. I was just going to say, well, forget it. I couldn't keep up this year, but it, it motivated me to say, wait a minute, maybe I can get back on track, keep doing the work. And I got the rewards from doing it more. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's awesome. Thank you. Thank you for that, Kim. Thank you. Very awesome to hear that. Yeah, thank you. Antonio, there was a question about getting a copy of Inkify. A copy of it? Yeah. Do you get a copy of your work when you complete? Oh, yeah. You can download your work. Yeah, you can download it. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. All right. Lauren, let's try you again. Hi. Sorry for that. I unfortunately had a, a call come in that I couldn't avoid. Um. I was curious, um, and forgive me if this has been answered already, but I noticed in the chat someone else said they had the question, so maybe it hasn't been. Um, the um, the, men, the certification track, is that the only path to becoming a mentor in the future? Correct. Okay. Um, and then my other question, again, I'm so sorry if this has been answered, but the the group, uh, there's an acronym where you sign up to be part of the community and maybe you know find an empathy buddy or a mentor and so forth yeah i noticed for the the sign up 
sheet or the, the web page anyway, doesn't really give you a ton of information about what, when you create that account, if you're, it, it asks for your full name and your email, and then it's going to make a, an a identity for you. Yeah. Do you then, is that your identity in that community? It's just your full name or? Uh, you can choose whatever you want. Um, but I mean, do you do that at sign up? At sign up, I believe. Yes. Yeah. So you would have to just put like, I don't know. You can, you can edit it in the future also. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it yeah. doesn't really matter that much. It's more of an academic question, I guess. I'm not yeah, yeah. trying to be like top secret. But I was just curious about it. Yeah. Um, but yeah. And that's where you would um, connect with empathy buddies um, and have a more real-time component to this exactly. experience. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thanks so much. Sorry if that was repetitive. Yeah, yeah. No worries. Thanks, Laura. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Cool. All right. Kathy Ann. Yeah, hi everyone. I wanted to respond also to the question of how do I get support, you know, staying with the course all year or how do I do that and turning in my journal entries. And you have so many options in the in this course to have that kind of support. Um, and like Kim said, if you don't if you don't get all the way through, that's okay too. If you're really intending to do that, then you have, like Antonio said, the mentors. Practice groups will help you stay on, a practice buddy can help you stay on track, an empathy buddy can help you stay on track. So there are many options to help you practice these exercises, integrate the work and hand in your work. So yes. you can always reach out to any of us about how to be involved in any of those spaces so that you get the support you need. Yeah, yeah. Did you have a follow-up, Kim, or something? Or something different. Oh, let me check. Yes, I. Oh, I did just want to say, I. I also it's like an I chose to invest kind of heavily that second year in 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 a practice group. For me, it was an investment, but in a practice group and an em, an empathy buddy and some of the empathy circles to really like do a deep. Um, immersion yeah. and it it did really help me to stay, to feel like I incorporated integrated it better thanks yeah and if anybody needs help on like hey can anybody help me to figure out how to stay on track with this like there's different ways and you might find you might be surprised by the answers that you get if you go into the GCN you might just be able to post that and, and you'll get some really great answers so yeah yeah, yeah. all right Stephanie um yeah um hi there i'm uh, from germany and um i'm to be honest i did the enrollment this morning and i i don't really know no yesterday yesterday and i don't really know if if i for what i signed up and and paid actually i don't really understand i'm sorry um i uh, i just um yeah i i want to figure out if if that is what i've signed uh, or or enrolled for is is uh, I need to to send in the work, is that so? Every if every you, email that you've sent is a is an exercise, and then I I I'm supposed to do it kind of, and then I send it in. Or well, we're gonna send you a platform. Um, I know that you're signed up for the certificate of completion, so you are gonna receive today's email, which you already got. But then on top of that, yes, another email later today. That's going to tell you where you put your work and how you do that. And so okay. every Wednesday, you receive two emails if you're in the certificate of completion. One is a regular compassion course email. And then the other one is has to do with certificate of completion, which is going to be us reminding you about the certificate of completion and yeah. where you go to put your work in. So we do okay. have a platform for you specifically. Okay. And then um, the second question was, so there's no weekly meeting actually online. Uh, there's this email. And then if we want to practice, um, we need to see at the left side where we can join groups. Is that right? Yeah, exactly. And mm -hmm. that might be a way for you to have weekly practice. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. But um, and this is not, is this every core or um, every... Um, meeting is not like is it is it um additional costs or is this uh, some of them, this managed 
some of them come with additional costs and some of them don't. So if you read hmm. through the practice group descriptions, you'll see what, you know, each one comes with basically. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, Antonio, a couple of things that have come up. I want to say practice also partners. Just that time. Yeah. So if yeah, you want practice to... partners are the same thing. I know yes. the time is it. Um, if someone is interested in joining and adding the certificate of completion, can we add that to the GCN or oh uh, if you want to add that to your registration, I'll put that link in here right now. So if you are already registered and you're like, hey, I thought about it and I want to do the certificate of completion then you can use this form. I'll put this into the link, into the chat rather. Um, and we and add it to the GCN for people who aren't able to grab that. It'll be on the GCN and we're gonna also send you an email about this. So there's gonna be three ways that you can find out about this. So here's uh, the link that you will all need. Let me put this in here. And... While you do that, I'll answer one more question. The registration does stay open for a few more weeks. And if other people join, they will get copies of the prior lessons. And we strongly recommend that they start with lesson one because it's those first few lessons that really are key to being able to uh, bring in the, the later lessons. Yeah. All right, Marta, and then we'll wrap up. Uh, I just have a very practical question. I would like to add the facilitator track to my registration. How can I do that? Yeah, if you want to do that, um, how about you just send us an email and then we'll figure okay. it out. Yeah, okay. if anybody wants okay. to kind of like add things like that, let's say you have a certificate of completion and you want to be a mentor, email us, you know, if you're already registered or if you want to do what Mark's is doing, you're like, hey, I want to do the organized facilitator thing. You just email us and we can figure that part out. There's a few logistics things on the, on the back end that we'll figure out, but we can make that work. So yeah, thanks for that. Sweet. And finally, to Antonio, I know we're very close to the end, but we didn't introduce the people who will be doing the uh, OF and mentor trainings this year. So uh, I'd love for them to at least have the opportunity to say a quick hello. Let's see. Yeah. So I think, uh, let's see. I think Corey's here um, and Kath Ann and Mary. So if you guys want to do a quick hello, uh, I don't see Mary. Let's see. I think Corey's around. And of course, Kath Ann is around. So these are going to be people who um, these are people who are helping the organizer facilitators and the mentors run their uh, run the program this year. So if you so this is like kind of like our leadership council. So maybe Kath Ann and Corey, if you want to do a quick hello. Yeah, I can. Uh, hi, everyone. I'm Kath Ann. And yes, I'm on the leadership council with Corey and Mary. And we are supporting the uh, practice group facilitators and mentors um, to help them support all of you. So all of us have practice groups and our mentors for the space, and we support others doing that. And my goal of being here is just because I'm passionate about the effectiveness of these practices and in integrating these concepts into my daily life. And so what I want to do is support you in doing that. So you're welcome to contact me for support in help with integrating these concepts and making life more wonderful. I'm glad you're here and I'm excited to journey with you this year. Yeah, awesome, sweet, cool. Well, thank you everybody. Really grateful, um, really appreciative of all your support, all the questions, everybody joining in. If you're in the course, remember the next time that we're gonna see you is on July 8th at 12 p.m. That's when we have the uh, Compassion Course uh, Monthly Conference. So until then, uh, we'll post this recording in case you want to share it with anybody. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you to Doreen, to Kathan, to Corey, to Marion, to everybody else here. We'll see you around and uh, talk soon, everybody. So thank you. Thanks, everybody. We'll talk soon. Hope you, there we go. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye